Dr. Jena, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Dear Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen uh, from social media life. This is uh, Rudra Narayan Das, Executive Director, Center for Adivasi Research and Development. Welcomes to you all to this global digital platform uh, called World Human Sciences and Management Conference 2021, organized by Center for Adivasi Research and Development, Odisha, in association with Indian Institute of Sam uh, Management, Sambalpur, Central University of Odisha, Koraput, and Ravenso University, Kota. The broader theme of this uh, conference is agnotological context of disciplinary practices, social sciences, and policy frames. On behalf of CARD, I extend my profound gratitude to Professor Mahadev Jaiswal, Professor Sarat Kumar Palito, and Professor Dr. Sanjay Kumar Naik, uh, patrons, and the convener of this uh, virtual conference, eminent Indian historian, Professor Chandi Prasad Nanda, and eminent politi policy activist, writer, and philanthropist, Mr. Charudat Panikai. Friends, uh, this uh, evening is going to be very um, um, academically very important for all of us because we have done it. It's none other than Professor Vladimir. Professor, Professor Vladimir is the director of International Institute of Social and Economic Studies, Vienna, Austria. He is also the former former deputy department head faculty of politology, Moscow State University, and former executive secretary, WPA. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you uh, hear me well, and uh, there are no problems with yes, the yes, transmission, sir. Yes, sir. yes? Everything is okay. Sir. Thank you very much. Uh, dear conference organizers, dear colleagues and students, it's nice you. Uh, it's nice to see you all. Uh, I decided uh, to be very open and share my uh, personal experience as a specialist on. Uh, we call ourselves civilization. And uh, I will try to somehow connect it in a very brief uh, talk with the activities of the uh, World Public Forum Dialogue of Civilizations and uh, its small uh, body uh, in Vienna, which is called International Institute for Socioeconomic Studies. I will not take a lot of your time. I don't feel myself <laughs> to be that important. Uh, let me introduce myself at the beginning of this lecture. I decided to do so not because in any way I want to impose myself or any of my views or reflections on the participants of the distinguished gathering, but only for the reason of modesty and honesty. As an attempt to explain why you should spend half an hour of your time listening to someone from a distant northern city. It happened so that I come from a family of Orient learners or Orient researchers, and I have spent almost 40 years of my life introducing some knowledge of the so-called Eastern cultures or uh, Orient, from my point of view, to the cultures of Occident or so-called West. Uh, we civilizationists were lucky enough to have our common dream come true from 2002 to 2015 uh, using an independent and then quite influential platform which has been named World Public Forum Dialogue of Civilizations. Let me just show you one of the dozens of books that uh, and bulletins that we have published at that time with generous funding from one uh, 
let's say, from United Nations and uh, committees and from uh, our supporters at that time in uh, different industries, from India, uh, Russia, and uh, partially from Europe. While getting prepared and uh, starting uh, this uh, platform, I mean, World Public Forum Dialogue of Civilizations, as uh, former Soviet scholars, uh, we, uh, we have asked about 400 best specialists in Soviet Union already, uh, already not existent before we could start any deliberation. So for a couple of years, uh, they've been working together and we have been uh, summarizing their views before we uh, started to insist on this uh, division of world by civilizations. Uh, but many, uh, many uh, mistakes we made and I wanted them to be, uh, to share with you. I think they are quite uh, of uh, an experience that we lived through spending our time and money and uh, health, but hopefully you will not repeat them. So while getting prepared and starting this platform, with all our presumably deep knowledge of English, we did not know that the term civilization, as we know it from Russian literature and our language is similar to the term culture in English or German. So part of our time and funds, we have insisted, we have spent insisting that our understanding is righter, is more right than understanding of the others. We have had hot discussions and broken many spears, but failed to impose our vision on the others because of our, uh, let's say, uh, misunder not misunderstanding, but inability to translate ourselves. So as most of you are quite young people, I would like to share this experience as my lesson number one, which I have received, received in my late forties after many years of reading Greek, German, Russian, French, and a bit of Chinese philosophical literature in order to prove my position and the reason for my long self-introduction, which is quite simple. It's no use insisting on your own understanding or position while good people around you who are willing to accept you personally when you are unable to translate it into their language and intellectual life. Uh, frankly, it was quite uh, unexpected for many of us, again, because we have gathered 400 specialists before getting into these talks. Uh, now, let me explain a bit what this uh, platform, World Public Forum, officially registered by UN commissions was about. First of all, this UN program has started right after the so-called Millennium Project. Of course, you know that now we have a CG project for that there has been this 20 years of dialogue of civilizations or cultures. And before that, we had the uh, UN Millennium Program. Everyone has been celebrating the change of times or millenniums in late 90s, but many research groups working absolutely independently in different countries like Lithuania, Iran, India, Czech Republic and Russia has come to a conclusion that the 1998 economic crisis might become perpetual or even systematic for the world economy. And that was one of our reasons why we, why we started this uh, platform we have shared our, uh, not feeling or expectations, but openly our calculations. 1998 is the real uh, uh, start of this uh, uh, huge crisis that we are facing now almost every decade. It's not 2008. 
And with this in mind, we uh, started to uh, analyze the uh, best scholars' uh, experiences in different uh, uh, parts of the world. And someone told us that there is a great term globalization. And uh, it has been brought into international discourse, but right from the beginning, it has been questioned even by those who has been intellectually uh, putting it into this discourse. There were two brilliant minds, very globalization, which could later on turn into globalization or regionalization, which is about the same, and bring some peace uh, and uh, stability to the world. They have, uh, they being very accurate and critical thinkers, they have applied for a research grant and worked with about 20 international groups, absolutely independently, all around the world, trying to assess the possible consequences of uh, this kind of rebalancing of what they saw as an old world order. And they have shared it in a monograph uh, and uh, published a very interesting and thoughtful book uh, co-edited by both of them entitled The Many Globalizations. I think it, it has been published or was published in the end of 90s and still available in internet, at least partially free of charge. And I would highly recommend you to, to read this book. It's not about critical uh, criticism, but it's about uh, a lesson they have learned. Once you introduce a global solution, you have to uh, try to calculate its consequences first. They did it. And uh, their conclusion can be very briefly summarized with few words. And I think it somehow corresponds to what we are trying to do now. Uh, it will not bring peace, but could somehow stabilize the world order by inviting, let's say, more indigenous people. It's a huge book. It's, it's uh, 400 pages. Uh, it has been translated into many uh, languages and uh, I've read it in Russian. After that, I've read it in English, a very good translation. So the idea to change the uh, world order for the better uh, was the initial idea of globalization, but many globalizations happened together and uh, we can uh, speculate on whether this process is still going on or it's uh, subsiding, but uh, the word didn't change uh, not only uh, our mentality to say nothing about the world order as we saw it, being classical uh, mo uh, modernist uh, uh, scientists. The pivot of the first meeting of the World Public Forum, also known as the Rhodes Forum, it's uh, a very a small island in Greece. And since most of us has been uh, from Russia with the Christian roots, so we decided to invite uh, different scholars uh, to this yearly event, also having uh, many conferences yearly for about 15 years. Uh, we had very small salaries and the only thing that uh, our sponsors uh, provided us were uh, free uh, economy class tickets and uh, a very small uh, hotel in uh, September or October, which uh, had uh, took very small fees, but were very much uh, surprised that for 15 years, scholars from all around the world has been gathering on this small island uh, uh, in, in Greece. And uh, I have counted the numbers of those who has visited this uh, island for many, for, uh, many years and few uh, several times. I have counted 11,000 people and it was personal contact. It's not like speaking in, uh, in the video or uh, let's say shaking the hands through the glass mirror of the, of the uh, uh, computer. Why am, am I talking about it? 
because the questions we have been able to address uh, naturally uh, meeting together were quite accurate. And uh, for uh, some time, uh, this logic of dialogue of civilizations, by the way, it's still the logic of Russia to a certain extent with all, with all my criticism about uh, how it's being done has influenced very much uh, uh, certain governments. And uh, we, had, uh, we had congratulations from uh, His Excellency, uh, President of India, uh, Manmohan Singh. And, uh, and uh, we have also translated his book into Russian. On, uh, and uh, I mean, I'm not going to go into every detail. And I think it has been quite an... Uh, influential natural get gathering and I'm just trying to uh, uh, somehow convey the spirit of this meetings very open although although I wouldn't say that we were all friends but it was a, 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 a meeting uh, a series of meetings that still somehow uh, encourage us although the world is now full of borders to uh, try to exchange uh, uh, our uh, publications and things like that. We don't know how to do it. It's, it's a bit chaotic now. We were wise enough to uh, invite uh, people from different uh, uh, countries and uh, let's say with uh, qualitative expertise into every event that we have planned. We didn't plan it, you know, from Russia or from Austria or from anywhere. So this, uh, this was quite a democratic gathering. Uh, the pivot of the first meeting was the recognition of the fact that the existing vector of development of the entire world after 1998 economic crisis uh, could lead humankind to irreversible and frightening consequences. I think we all experience uh, them now. We were influential, but we were not influential enough uh, to, uh, to change something. Since then, we have started to tackle different topics like the following ones. Uh, it was our search for a new uh, humane paradigm or human paradigm of world development. And we had a brilliant uh, Indian uh, thinker. Uh, he called himself a visionary, J.C. Kapoor. He had, uh, I think uh, he, he has gone now. Uh, and uh, I think somewhere in Delhi, there is still a small Kapoor Farms uh, uh, project, uh, by the way, I was told that he was the one of the first uh, uh, Indians who brought the idea of uh, uh, using solar energy uh, for uh, the purposes of development in 1980s or early 1990s. So he was really to an extent a visionary, a very kind person. Uh, then the second topic that we have been addressing, we found it very necessary after the uh, 70 years of uh, Soviet socialism, uh, years especially, uh, the spiritual situation in society. Uh, we didn't have enough, uh, 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 let's say, access to our traditional values at that time not almost satisfied with it, but it was a very natural quest, both in Russia and in many parts of Europe to uh, uh, look into the roots to find some answers on how to live uh, further. Uh, in England, they have called it uh, post-secularism. Uh, some say it's a kind of uh, uh, speculation, but anyway, uh, uh, we are living in uh, complex societies, and part of it is, uh, is absolutely devoted to the uh, historical uh, uh, roots of their families and uh, their uh, cultures, and part, is looking, uh, and part is looking somewhere ahead, like uh, J.C. Kapoor. He came from a very traditional family, but somehow he, uh, 
he was to grasp the uh, uh, nerve of the times of change, and he found the solar energy as an, uh, one of the answers to how he can uh, help his own country develop and uh, perspire, and become richer. Uh, the third uh, uh, set of topics we have been dealing yearly uh, was the uh, principal values of dialogue of cultures. Uh, again, we called it dialogue of civilizations. It turned out to be that it's better to say it's dialogue of cultures and we have published books and we have uh, even in, uh, we have even had a chance to address the United Nations uh, with, uh, with our understanding of uh, 10 golden rules of dialogue. They were, uh, they have been accepted. Uh, we don't know what happened to them afterwards. And uh, uh, the other very, uh, in my, at least from my point of view, very interesting uh, project which is developing, by the way, uh, within certain groups of, of, of experts who used to come to this Rhodes Forum. It was called Dialogue of Cultures from Theory to Action. And uh, at least from what I remember, there have been more than 100 small groups of experts uh, who not only wrote about Dialogue of Cultures, specializing in such topics as uh, 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 inter-cultural uh, uh, dialogues, inter-religious dialogues, and uh, all kinds of uh, pure dialogues. They, they exist somewhere, and uh, some, sometimes they send what they have been doing. I'm just addressing the organizer of this conference. Don't, don't uh, miss your chance to, to work with the people that have attended this uh, prestigious event afterwards. It's uh, usually all the work is being done between the events, not, not, not during them. Uh, so if my memory doesn't fail me, we have uh, had about 40 international conferences, uh, 15 on roads and uh, uh, something, uh, about 30 uh, in different countries, including Cuba, Libya, United States, Mexico, uh, 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 in six or seven countries of the Middle East. We have come to India five times and organized uh, big conferences with uh, GNU, Jawaharlal Nehru University, and we were met very uh, warmly there. We have even dared to uh, go to China several times uh, and try to, uh, uh, let's say, at that time, impose our vision of dialogue. Uh, I'm not sure we have, we have been very successful there, as well as many other uh, 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 representatives of, of this idea, because let's say in Chinese, I'm a professional sinologist. In Chinese, you can't uh, translate uh, the idea of dialogue. Uh, for us, it's a dialogue between uh, a person, the other person, and someone, maybe upstairs, maybe we don't know where, who would say, okay, you're in dialogue. In, in Chinese, it's a bit different. It's, uh, the idea is to uh, sit on the different sides of the table, look uh, at the eyes of each other, and try to persuade. So the idea of dialogue is definitely not to impose or to persuade. So I would say, in a, in a way, we have uh, we we haven't achieved our goals in, uh, in that project in China. Although they were very warm, very open for discussion, but they say, guys, we don't understand. Uh, the world has changed very much since then, or better to say, the ones who think they own it decided to build these walls for the purposes they know. New borders arose. We can't properly communicate, even with this uh, huge network of friendly experts. In some countries, it might be considered as treachery and punished accordingly. But most of us, or some of us, are trying to get in touch in order to share not only their worries, but their success stories. 
And uh, here is uh, my personal lesson number two, which I would appreciate you listening to. It's a short message. Many of those who share their worries and never share their success stories are not good people that could properly guide you in your life, but may be a misguiding source of influence on you. Uh, some old friend from India once wrote me that they have the same attitude as Russians to the issue of choosing friends, teachers, and uh, nominating good people. Uh, he told me, we call it big heart. Uh, like people or teachers or mentors whose mind and feelings or senses are not in permanent opposition, but in peace. So we have uh, absolutely the same norm in classic and classical Russian uh, tradition and uh, working for many years in Austria, I, find, I, I found about the same. If you have a certain peace of mind and uh, heart, uh, it's okay. <laughs> You're not uh, necessarily uh, uh, the most important man or, or person in the room, but you're tolerated quite well. Within this in mind, let me now turn to some vision or humble understanding of uh, uh, three or four aspects of the dialogue of cultures in post-COVID era. Many are worried that this virus has some kind of built-in artificial intelligence component. The artificial intelligence is all around you nowadays. Con conferencing looks more and more about sharing your photo and image with the people you don't know and will probably never meet again anywhere unless the terrible pandemic will be stopped by a good vaccine. And as many old professionals say, it usually takes about two years to invent, test and produce the vaccine against any of the illnesses already known to humans. It's like this. Hopefully we'll have such remedies available quite soon, but how will they be distributed? I think we all know the answer. For many of us who come or originate from the collective minds of the last century, it will be a test on the existence of what we used to call international community. Is it still there? Uh, which cares or should care about the existence of all humans. So in a certain way, we would most probably witness the collapse of our dream to build, um, to build a more human oriented and just international society and corresponding world order and refocus our attention to building a just world in our Eurasia. Which brings me to my second question. We can't be that big. So we have, we have a huge continent where we could do something good. My second question is, uh, what can a single person do to prevent this global matrix of carelessness uh, winning all over us? My personal experience tells me that one should develop his own critical thinking as well as dig himself into something that might be called as a true, true relationship. One shouldn't be shy to ask his own questions and request for an answer from elder persons. Sometimes these questions uh, uh, are so, might sound to the one who uh, asks them as, as uh, let's say, silly provocation, but that's not right. Uh, from what most of us learned from philosophy and their experience, it's a matter of one to carefully and respectfully formulate his questions. If his intention is not a vulgar necessity to advertise himself as an expert on everything, but to receive a respectable answer. So the better you formulate your question, the better uh, quality of the answer comes. If it doesn't come, it's, it's someone who might be uh, answering then write to you in, in some time from uh, the time that you have asked it. Uh, 
this, in my humble opinion, might be a challenging but a proper perspective for the dialogue of cultures after the COVID times. We have enough time to read books and sit at home. So properly, we could spend some of it to formulate the questions better and try to address them to the people you respect. My third point is more geopolitical than cultural. Geocultural, if I may. Most of experts around the world agree that in the current change of times, the focus of international attention has turned to so-called Eurasia a region where many of us are living and most probably will continue to do so. And we witness not only growing attention to our intellectual roots and prospective developments, but the attempts to frame us into an existing paradigm of carelessness and neglection to our cultural roots. Imho here, in my humble opinion here in Eurasia, we are quite complementary from the point of view of our historical experience and the tradition to live together more or less peacefully and adapt ourselves to the changing international environment. Someone would of course uh, name uh, Makinder, a very well known uh, uh, Western Eurasianist as a great uh, geostrategic thinker who has invented or witnessed this Eurasian paradigm uh, when it started to uh, occur. But I would like to draw your attention to initial Eurasian thinkers. Of course, I'm much better with the names of Russian historians who, who did it. I'm sure in I even know the names of those Indian philosophers who were uh, thinking of it also, but I would like to mention the Russian ones, like Danielevsky, Trubetskoy, Savitsky, Vernadsky, and some others. Uh, I think we should, we should better uh, uh, find uh, uh, our own heroes and our own uh, philosophers in order to uh, try to explain our position to the others, not because we uh, dislike the others or disrespect them, but because we can explain it much better. By the way, most of these uh, uh, protagonists, philosophers who came out with the idea of uh, Eurasia in late 19th century left Russia after the October Revolution on a so-called philosophical vessel. They left Russia for Europe because they couldn't tolerate Bolsheviks and never halted their relationship in devotion to Russian culture and tradition. This is not about Russia. This is about why people leave their countries and uh, uh, keep their uh, uh, thoughts uh, about their own country. And it's, it's absolutely natural. And uh, many of them, very old, did participate in these roads meetings, bringing some understanding of the Eurasian perspective to Russia uh, uh, as early as the beginning of 2000s. It was a strange word here. They said, what's Eurasia? We have uh, West. East, we have Russia, we have uh, Finland and all that. So it also took quite a time to uh, understand the richness of this uh, concept, which has been somehow saved for us uh, by uh, our immigrants. Uh, by the way, their fate in Europe has been mostly tragic. Uh, they, they became taxi drivers, they became uh, plumbers or whoever else, but they kept uh, conferencing together and writing something uh, in a, in a uh, let's say, dream that uh, this uh, uh, letter unsent, they couldn't, they, they didn't have the, the practical possibility to send this in 20s or 30s of the last century, I mean the 20th century here, but they kept writing books and articles and they have been waiting for the moment 
when this letter could be sent. And they did it. And I'm absolutely fascinated that uh, one of the first uh, uh, expert communities that have received this uh, letter previously unsent was this Rhodes community. They were, they, they, they were not afraid uh, about this huge international gathering and uh, very old people, they came and they handed us this uh, manuscripts uh, and we were very happy to accept them. Among the contemporary Western researchers, let me, I mean, I have to, to be honest, let me outline if someone is uh, interested in uh, Russian, uh, dominating Russian European views on Eurasia, I would like to uh, mention the name of professor of University of uh, Southeastern Norway, Professor Glenn Gissen. He's also an editor here in Russia in, in the uh, very famous Global Affairs magazine. I'm not sure he is a big fan of globalization, but anyway, uh, uh, the, the journal is very popular. Is analyzing the process of uh, Eurasian to harmonize its future perspective into a network of practical institutional solutions. Of course, he is more about Russia. Of course, he is more about, uh, let's say, Russian Eurasian dream. And he understands that Eurasia is too huge for any country or any way of thinking to dominate. But he he's publishing books and articles and papers on such things as, uh, or such institutions as Eurasia Economic Union, uh, uh, India's initiative, uh, ASEAN, uh, We have been very, very uh, active in, as I already told you, in uh, trying to uh, see the Chinese side. And uh, I was in actual radio and an advisor to the president for uh, relations with uh, government organizations. So we went to China and we explained that Belt uh, and Road Initiative. It was the Silk Road Initiative. And after a couple of years of talks and explanations and uh, providing the graphics, we, uh, uh, I mean, we in Russian railroads have succeeded in adding the word belt. The belt of development was the initial idea. So this uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative was the initiative uh, belt of development and railroad uh, con uh, construction initiative. So in, uh, I have all the documents and uh, I'm very grateful to the Chinese side and many of us are grateful for accepting this kind of uh, understanding of, of the initiative. And uh, let me turn back to Glenn Deason. Uh, I think his point that there is a difference between uh, uh, Eurasian integration and European integration, which he sees in uh, building sovereign decision-making centers instead of, uh, uh, instead of uh, some uh, 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 territories of dialogue or something like that. Uh, and I'm proud to see that our platform with its intellectually crucial Rhodes Forum declaration from 2003, it's also available, which has played a role in opposing a one power or one side domination concept some 20 years ago. Believe me, it hasn't been that popular. And has internationally confirmed the idea and the possibility of a so-called alternative globalization. Uh, we didn't use the word Eurasia at that time, but, but, but some other kind of globalization uh, that could be more humane oriented. And uh, the idea was to base it on the norms of mutual existence, cultural complementarity, 
and mutual respect. In my humble opinion, such huge international gatherings as World Public Forum Dialogue of Civilizations, which have assisted in peacefully reshaping the world in the beginning of cyclical crisis of its economic financial system, might or even should occur again from time to time, even in the form, even in the post pandemic existence for open and persuasive presentations of the results of the works of critical thinkers and uh, diplomats and former uh, military generals and others who would have enough courage to do so, hopefully in a non-chaotic uh, manner, which is absolutely important. You can hear hundreds of reports if they are not organized for your convenience, or uh, they are not user-friendly, uh, they will not impress you, but you have to hire a good specialist in certain country and certain culture who could uh, uh, organize it uh, through, through his countries or cultural mentality. But uh, let me say, uh, it's more of a dream of mine Unfortunately, uh, uh, the building walls is becoming a new norm, both in international relations and among opinion leaders. But again, I'm old enough to, to hope for something. And uh, once again, I'm not imposing or another am I in a position to impose my views and quests for human solidarity and critical thinking on you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful uh, deliberation. Now I'd like to uh, invite Dr. Nupur Patnaik for a quick comment. Perhaps she would not be able to join. Uh, now I'd like to uh, invite Professor B.C. Das to go for any quick comments, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, greetings to Professor Vladimir. Uh, sir, uh, the uh, questions uh, being booking in our mind uh, is uh, uh, center, centered around the cultural dialogue, what is taking place in all over the world. Sir, the purpose of uh, cultural dialogue is to spread uh, is to spread the ideas and practices based on truth, non-violence, love, and peace. Sir, in what ways COVID-19 pandemic has brought in love and peace? Who is responsible for this mutant coronavirus? Facing this genre of health crisis has united the world to think over this and find out the way out and how to establish this is the time uh, for the this is the time and the challenge for the uh, education and cultural uh, institutions to uh, to innovate uh, the ways uh, this is the time for uh, ICT uh, and artificial intelligence to have uh, different kinds of uh, um, awareness platforms and uh, campaigns, how to uh, make uh, uh, the cultural dialogue uh, very interactive and uh, very uh, uh, emerging and uh, very responsive to global situations. So this is the uh, question um, uh, to you, sir. Over to Professor Vladimir. Sir. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm a smoker, so I didn't want you to see me smoking. Uh, I, I see no, I, I see no big, uh, uh, let's say, problem in it if we could uh, uh, gather from time to time uh, some people who are really devoted to understanding of other cultures and uh, they could present the set of questions 
they could redistribute it among their friends, uh, among uh, people they have been in touch to and wait for their replies. And these conferences could gather uh, thousands of participants. At least we would be sharing knowledge, knowledge about the necessity of intercultural dialogue and uh, critical thinking. And there is one more thing I didn't want to draw your attention to, not, let's say, taking all your time. Uh, the governments of your country or my country usually do not listen to the prophets uh, in their country. That's, that's for some reason, that there are many jokes about it, that the, let's say, the priest in uh, the church you are not uh, visiting, uh, I'm not fanatic, but sometimes I go there, uh, uh, is better than yours. So uh, the leaders of, of the countries and large communities tend to, uh, 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 let's say, tend to uh, listen to foreigners. I don't know why, that's, that's, that's uh, normative. And uh, by the way, we have influenced uh, uh, our government with the ideas of dialogue by gathering in, in Greece. So that's my, that's my point. Uh, there is no big deal to provide good knowledge uh, to many others, and if you want to provide it to your own government, gather somewhere abroad. Thank you, sir. Sir, and uh, the second question for you. Um, uh, nowadays, uh, maximum number of uh, contemporary researchers, as you mentioned in, in your talk, uh, how could you, these white people always, they think they are the knowledge producers and the rest of the world will catch them and follow them. And in terms of civilization, you rightly mentioned about your talk and your, what you call it, your world public forum. Numbers of research has been conducted so many decades, so many years. What the actual human civilization learn from these researchers? What is your ideas on particular the sense of civilization in the sense making of 21st century as well. And what is your ideas about the decolonizing methodology? Please, uh, if you could do brief some of your uh, quick comment, it's uh, okay now, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me let let me let me put it that way. Uh, we have had this experience of decolonization of our own mind, and I tried to express it to you. We have been very much colonized by uh, 300 years of existence as, let's say, a small part of Europe. And in a way, we have been uh, away from our own culture. Now that we know it, now that we understand it, uh, what we can share is the experience of uh, getting to know your own culture in a non-violent way. That's, that's uh, you become richer, but you should not become more aggressive. That's why I think one of the initiators of the platform has been this uh, wonderful Indian visionary who said, you will witness, uh, sometimes uh, your country will witness lots of money coming in, lots of uh, foreign intellectuals coming in, persuading, insisting, uh, uh, looking for profit, but in case you don't understand uh, your own culture, I mean, there is no, no use taking money from any, every, anyone else. I'm sorry for being that philosophical. I mean, I wrote a number of books on that, so possibly I, I, I didn't satisfy your uh, question. Okay, sir. And sir, I would like to know more about your this world public forum. What kind of uh, uh, research they have conducted in particular the civil and concern? And what is your idea as how to overcome this pandemic situation as of now? Okay, uh, I'm not a quick answer. I'm not a commentator. You know, I, I usually live with the question. If, if, if I want to, let's say, if my heart takes your question, uh, as a kind of a serious and uh, 
if, if it touches me, I would be happy to answer. And uh, hopefully there is my personal email, uh, uh, which is available. I, I, I can uh, put it here. Uh, this uh, dialogue of civilizations formally is not uh, is not a legal entity no more. There are people around the world who would who would like, like to share their ideas. We don't have funding, and uh, again uh, we had some and we were happy about it. But uh, let me write my email and uh, I can either try to answer myself or redirect it to people who are in better position uh, from the practical point of view. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. But here is one more question in chat box. If you could answer it then well enough, sir. Sorry, I, I missed your question. Uh, Professor Bichitas, uh, can you please read for sir uh, the question of Dr. Nina Das, I think? I would like to ask one more question to Professor Vladimir and then uh, uh, it will be followed by Nina Das and both of them. Uh, sir, uh, 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 from the early civilizations, uh, uh, about uh, five to six thousand years ago, when uh, the rise of food and uh, agriculture uh, supported human being to have uh, progress, social progress, and to start a cultural dialogue. So this is the time of uh, early civilizations. And then uh, we uh, found uh, in Europe, Europe the Renaissance period from 14th century to 17th century. So a great change, social change and uh, cultural uh, uh, development uh, came in. Uh, and uh, from uh, there, uh, if we uh, look at uh, the sign of uh, GATT uh, by WTO, World Trade Organizations, in 1986, when uh, more than 100 countries uh, came together to uh, have a, a document uh, that that is based on trade and uh, tariff and exchange program of their business and uh, uh, education also so this was a uh, uh, this was a crucial time also then uh, sir uh, when we look at uh, the revolution made by ict information and communication technologies followed by artificial intelligence so we uh, uh, found a, a kind of learning society uh, in all society uh, all over the world. So uh, we are very much uh, enlightened and we are very much progressive. We feel proud of for this progress. Uh, but when uh, we face this kind of situation out of uh, COVID-19 coronavirus, so now the world, uh, world's economy, uh, social system, uh, I think uh, uh, is at uh, a dangerous uh, square. So this is a very uh, what uh, kind of uh, um, dangerous situation. So uh, we need a way out. We need a, a, a right path uh, uh, to overcome uh, these situations. So um, I think uh, I, I hope uh, uh, some of your ideas may be uh, supplemented to my ideas. Over to sir, yeah. Professor Vladimir. Uh, again, uh, my answer is quite, uh, let's say, uh, optimistic. And uh, as my uh, old friend and uh, supporter of this kind of ideas, the former head of Russian railways, Professor Yukunin, told I'm a clinical optimist. You have to be a clinical optimist if you have made uh, uh, good calculations. And again, we have uh, addressed uh, some couple of years ago, uh, the uh, military specialists in Russia asking, uh, when do you see the, uh, let's say, uh, 
end of uh, pandemics. So they kind of thought a bit and said, we don't see the end. So we have to, we have to uh, start living with it. Uh, hopefully uh, assisting, uh, assisting uh, our friends to get the best vaccines as fast as they are tested. So it's two years again, uh, we are, uh, I mean, in many countries, we are about getting these vaccines and uh, hopefully they will be much better than the ones that have been initially proposed. By the way, I haven't vaccinated myself. Uh, for some reasons, I don't know why, maybe because uh, I have already got this, uh, uh, a part, I've become a part of pandemics in, in the end of 2020, but uh, there is a certain courage one needs and uh, it, it, it either, uh, it must be, it might be based on your, uh, let's say, faith or uh, critical thinking. In my, uh, let's say, my decision was based on, on critical thinking two years. So uh, even if we start to uh, understand and evaluate different uh, international experiences, by the way, in Norway, in Sweden, and in some other countries, uh, they didn't use lots of vaccines and the only uh, uh, cure they have recommended is not get together uh, uh, too much times. And uh, I think that even here in my country, they start to understand that living in big cities and using uh, public transportation is not a good idea. So I'm aware of, uh, uh, discussions in my government that uh, uh, it's better to build a one story high Russia along it uh, all uh, to build small cities where people mix together and are uh, usually first victims of, of such uh, uh, pandemics or other pandemics. So, but that's a Russian example. We have huge territory and we have uh, quite a small population. So uh, in, case we, in case we discover it here, uh, I'm not a businessman. And uh, when all these things started, I had a couple of phone calls from my friends in India. They said, okay, if you have anything, please connect us. I will be happy to connect you with, with the government officials who are dealing with this, uh, 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 with this uh, pandemics. And if, if, if I find the information that this kind of vaccine has been produced, I'll be happy to get you or your uh, friendly business people to, to talk with them. I'm not a mediator in this sense, but... Uh, I'm absolutely sure that here in Eurasia we have we have this uh, great experience of mutual understanding that, that helps us much more in a, a let's say public way to redistribute the uh, 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 heights of our civilizational uh, research. Sorry, that's my answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I would uh, like to request uh, Dr. Dinadas uh, to have her question and uh, uh, then uh, what of them. Okay, uh, good evening all of you. Uh, good evening all uh, dignitaries present here, Honorable uh, our Director Sir and uh, most uh, esteemed uh, uh, Chief Speaker, today's Chief Speaker, Professor Vladimir Kulikov uh, Sir. Director IISES Vienna Austria, uh, sir, and uh, uh, all the professors present here, the students, research scholars, uh, our executive uh, director, and all the team of CAR. Uh, on the behalf of um, CAR Odisha, I would like to uh, propose a vote of thanks, and it's really uh, honor for us that, sir. 
uh, you are with us and you have shared your valuable experiences, uh, your thoughts, uh, your experiences, your ideas have enlightened our minds and have uh, given a new path of uh, uh, that is cultural dialogue and how to proceed to build an inclusive society, a society full of justice, cohesion, and uh, understanding, mutual understanding, and uh, shared future, uh, which will show us uh, inclusive socioeconomic growth and inclusive governance, democracy. Actually, intercultural dialogues uh, foster social co cohesion and helps to create uh, an environment which is conducive to sustainable development. Particularly, we all as universities and institutions of higher learning, uh, we, we have benefited from your international experiences and your unique capacity to foster intercultural dialogue uh, within uh, all these countries. So thank you so much, sir. I, I, uh, propose uh, a, a deep sense of gratitude um, um, uh, on the behalf of CARD or um, Orissa and uh, we are really grateful to you that you have spared your valuable time and you have shared experiences uh, with us. Thank you, sir. I, I would also like to thank all the dignitaries present here in the virtual dais, our esteemed director, sir, uh, our executive director, sir, our esteemed convener, sir, and uh, our um, consultant, sir, um, and uh, whosoever is attached with our team. I'd also like to uh, give thanks to patrons of the program, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Ravensa University, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central University, Koraput, and Honorable Director, IIM, Sambalpur. And also, I would like to thank Dr. Brissi Das and um, all the coordination team. Uh, thank you very much. I have a, uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And looking forward for future engagement. So thank you so much. Okay, I'll be happy to receive your emails. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.